Sleepy Hollow. The Headless Horseman rides again. Ichabod Crane wastes no time getting to the heart of the matter. So three pe persons murdered. Is anyone suspected? Constable Baltus Van Tassel said indulgently. How much have your superiors explained to you? Only that the three were slain in open ground and the, their heads found severed from their bodies. The heads were not found at all, Reverend Steen Wikes interrupted. The heads were not found at all. The heads are gone, taken. Notable Hardenbrooks leaned forward, taken by the headless horseman, taken back to hell. Prologue, October 1799, Sleepy Hollow, New York. To the New York City constables, three murders need help. Respond immediately. B. Van Tassel. It was the most recent of many messages. Each had been more desperate than the one before. No. One. No one in the police department had ever heard of Sleepy Hollow. Not presumably had anyone else in the city. To a New Yorker, for all intents and purposes, the world ended at Wall Street. One seldom ventured north to the farmlands and the swamps of Manhattan Island, let alone over the river to the gentle arcade named for a family known as the Bronx. Sleepy Hollow, a two-day journey farther, might as well have been the moon. What some judge aloof aloofness New York called Necessity? The city was growing too fast to control. Distant murders held a little shock valued in this place, where death was a daily event, where streets were littered with victims of passion and pettiness, <clears throat> of debt and the grudge held too long, where yellow fever wiped out thousands, poverty ran rampant, and social service constant consisted of 16 constables and 14 marshals, three jails, a workhouse, and a poorhouse. In New York, just as in Sleepy Hollow, a wily killer could pull off the perfect crime because in 1799, the dead did not tell secrets. It lo if life was a raw and unforgiving public journey. Death was a solemn mystery best handled by the family and the church. A victim who had no kin became a disposal problem for the state. The body was of no use. It held no clues unless one knew how to look for them. He was not dead, no doubt about that. He had His head bobbed at on dark and brackage water, his hair floating among the debris, like a weaver, weary, lost animal, a drowned river rat, Constable Ichabod Crane had fought it first. Perhaps he should have left it at that, but something about the object had stopped him. <clears throat> a lodged moment, the suggestion of weight undertoned the hair. Approaching the edge of the Hudson River, Ichabod Crane swallowed hard. At times such as these, he wished he didn't see so much. It was his nature, for better or worse. He carried himself at the edge of caution, a sharp and suspicious eye, a healthy disrespect for the normal police procedures that made him among his fellow New Yorkers constables either the most innovating or the most annoying man on earth. As Ichabod leaned over the pier, his lantern light revealing the outline below the surface of the river, a body, male. With his free hand, 
He rang his bell, his alarm bell, as hard as he could. Footsteps echoed from the cobbled streets behind him. Where are you? A voice rang out. Over here! Ichabod shouted. Looking over his shoulders, he saw two familiar silhouettes emerging into the light of the street lamps. Constable Green and Wizard Spoon. I need your help with this. Ichabod sat down his alarm bell and reached underwater, hooked his arms around the body's shoulder. Constable Crane! Ichabod Crane! came Green's weary voice. Is that you? The body was heavy. Unbelievably heavy. Ichabod planted one foot firmly against the wood pl piling to help from falling in. None other, he grunged, grunted, and not only me, I have found something. The body emerged from the murk, staining against the weight Ichabod dragged it onto the docks. Its face was swollen, cur a swollen cartridge, a balloon image of a man. Its clothes stained against the bloat of a waterlogged torso. Ichabod forced himself to breathe deeply to avoid an overwhelming wave of nausea. I have found something which was lately a man. Ichabod told the other officers. Even in darkness, Ichabod could see the faces of his two colleagues. Green murmured something about wheelbarrows. And then they were gone. How did this happen? Ichabod asked himself. An accident, a drunken plunge, after a night of carousing. That was the usual explanation. Well, that and suicide. The Hudson River had claimed to share of men with broken dreams. Or was it murder? A bad debt, perhaps? Ichabod held his lantern over the body, searching for burn, bruises or in cuts, but the light was too erratic, too faint. Clearly, the body must be examined. If it was murder, the offender was still at large. The creaking and the scraping of rustic metal wheels pierced green and wither spoons. As me the men finally came into the light, Ichabod was relieved to see that among them, along with the wheelbarrow, they had brought a blanket. Already the eyes of the dead man seemed to have been bur burned up, a place in Ichabod's brain. The three constables loaded the corpse onto the wheelbarrow. Ichabod made sure to drape the blanket so that the face was covered. Grimly wordless, the three men pushed the creaky card towards the center of the metropolis. The warehouse yard, the watchhouse yard, was empty, given in an observably peaceful quantity that would shatter at dawn. First light, of course, throughout the daytime, any visitor not used to, see to the ways of New York might have missed the ground for a madhouse. But now it was an empty blacklist of night, and the cart's wheels echoed loudly as Ichabod and his cohorts entered the main watchhouse chamber. Throughout the bars of the jail cells, the yellow eyes of convicts followed the men's motion movements. The high constables was waiting, his features moved, and beneath a ticket of mustaches and beards remained unmoved as a blanket. Unmoved as he lifted the blanket to examine the body. Bonnet, he said. <clears throat> yes, sir, snapped Constable Green. Immediately, Constable Witherspoon began wheeling the body away. Ichabod stunned. Surely the High Constables knew better than to destroy evidence. Just a moment. If I may, Ichabod blurted out, we do not know what was the cause of death. Will you find them in the river? The High Constable replied slowly, the cause of death is drowning.
Possibly so, if there were water in the lungs. Ichabod said, but by pathology, we must determine whether or not the dead. He was dead when he went into the river. The high constable was just stiffed and cut him up. Are you, are we heathens? We let him rest in peace, in one piece, as according to God in the New York Department of Health. Ichabod stiffened in protest. It was no use. The high constable was not to be contradicted by anyone. A flurry of shouts, scuffled, broken. The tense quiet thoughts of the watch house entrance. Two others constables dragging in another victim. This one was alive but bloody and half senseless. What happened to him? The high constable demanded. Nothing, sir. One of the officers replied. Arrested for burglary. The two men shoved the man against the iron bars. He hit with a loud, sickening clank and cried out in pain. One constable threw open the jail door and pulled the leather trenchant. Trenchant. Together, the two men bludgeoned their victim until he fell, withered, into the cell. Ichabod averted his eyes. Good work, the high constable said. No, the worst work. Ichabod said to himself, the work of a society whose growth has exceeded its compassion and logic. If the high constable would not listen to his pleas personally, Ichabod was determined to seek a public forum. The morning, a seminal crime-fighting presentation was to occur at the watch house. At the invitations of a besieged police department, citizens were to present crime-fighting ideas. The high constable, the Bergen master, the Albert men, and the mag magistrates would offer a cash contract for the best of the presentations. Ichabod decided to attend as a civilian participant, not a constable. He arrived at the warehouse shortly after dawn, though the windows came with a deafening clamor of New York mornings, milkmen, and chimney sweeps, bakers and bellmen, hot corn girls, whose overflowing baskets sent a sweet warm aroma into the sweet, choked room. The presentations were loud and rushed. It seemed every inventor eccentric and crank in New York was attending, many having arrived before daybreak. Each idea seemed more ludicrous than the last. More Ichabod noticed motivations more by greed than justice. And in a few weeks, the plagues of pickpockets will be a thing of the past. Enough announced a shifty-eyed man, shouting to be heard. He held up a suit soon of mechanic metallic gadgets resembling a mousetrap. Give me a dozen constables in gentlemen dresses. Mixing with a crowd with pickpocketers are rife. He pocketed the trap, then, with a flourish, he held aloft a short stick attached to one end. To a wooden hand. Slowly, he moved his hand towards his own pocket, a nifty hand dip into the gentleman's pocket, and snap! The trap lurched. In a high triumph, the man withdrew the wooden hand. Its fingers had been cut off. It came out winds. The device was ridiculous, barbaric. Thank you, the burgomaster said with a polite nod. We will take your device under consideration, Mr. Vel Vanderbilt. Next! Ichabod leaned forward, trying to attach the w officials' attention. Surely, they'd seen him before seeing another of these gothic monstrosities. The High Constable ignored him. Mr. Tompkins! Mr. Tompkins! was even more ragged than the last man. He invented vengeance resembling an animal's cage. Ichabod sprang to his cage, unable to restrain himself. Gentlemen, he cried, in a few months we will be living in the 20th, in the 19th century. 
Wait your turn, Constable Crane, the High Constable interrupted. Ichabod barreled, barreled on. These devices are worthless of modern civilizations. Quiet, the Burgomaster barked. Next, I say. Thank you, sir, Tompkins shouted, pulling open the cage door. The door, the floor, was f solid steel. A withering board dangled by the strings of the cage bars, and a metal clamp hung from the ceiling like a chandelier. The Tompkins self-lock confessional is cheap, and it will last for years with just an occasional wipe with a damp cloth. Ichabod began writing furiously on a sheet of paper. When the villains step into the metal floor, Tompkins continued, Arrest this man! Arrest this man! Ichabod shouted. The High Constable glared at him. Arrest? I accuse him of mud! Ichabod insisted. What are you talking about, you loon? Tompkins said. Ichabod gave the man a shove, sending him back, warned, backwards into the cage. Instantly, the door slammed shut. The clamps dropped from the ceiling, gripping Tompkins' heads. As the man screamed, the room erupted in bewilderedness, shouting. Ichabod slapped his sheet into the writing board. Sign here. Then rele the release handle, groaned. Tompkins groaned. Not until you confess, <clears throat> Ichabod replied. Tompkins, Tompkins quickly signed, his face twisting into agony. Ichabod grabbed the paper and pulled the wither, the release handle. I have a confession, sh he shouted, to the mud of a man I fished out of the river last night. Tompkins fell limply to the floor, a group of men lumbered to the cage and dragged him away. The platform was a pit. Pandemonium. The High Constable stood up briskly and indulgently. Indignation. Stand down! I stand up for the sense and justice! Ichabod retorted. Our jails overflow with men and women. Convicted on confessions worth no more than this one. High Constable banged his javel for silence. The Burgomaster leaned forward over his dais. Constable, this is a song we have not heard from you more than once, but never before. It's this discordant. A compliment. I have two courses open to me. First, I let you cool your head on the ceiling until you learn respect for the dignity of my office. I beg your pardon. Ichabod cut in. I only meant well. Why am I the only one who sees that two meant well? Why am I meant to solve crimes? I beg your pardon. Ichabod cut in. I only meant well. Why am I the only one who sees that to solve crimes? To detect the guilty, we must use our brains to recognize vital crew clues. Uh, using up-to-date scientific which brings me to my second course, the Burgomaster continued. Constable Crane, there is a town upstate two days journey to the north in the Hudson Heights land. It is a place called Sleepy Hollow. Have you heard of it? I have not, Ichabod said worriedly. An isolated farmer in community mostly Dutch, the Burgomaster explained. Three people have been murdered there. All f within a fortnight, each found with his or hers head lopped off. Ichabod blanched. Lopped off? Clean as dandelion heads, apparently. Now, these ideas of yours claim they have never been put to the test. I have never been allowed to put them to the test. Granted. So take your experiments to Sleepy Hollow and deduce or detect the murders. Bring him here to face our good justice. Will you do this? The prospect was appalling, revolting, and a golden opportunity. 
Ichabod swallowed his doubts. I shall, he said, gladly. The Burgermaster smiled. And remember, it is you, Ichabod Crane, who is now put to the test.